Hello and welcome to our garden. As you'll probably see by the houses next door and the cars that go by, we have, we live in suburbia, so we have houses around us. We have just under a third of an acre. Um, so this is real world gardening. This is basically everyday gardener, basic, a side yard along the house. I'm not sure how many feet it is. We haven't measured it. But we have a lot of erosion issues. Uh, the house was built up because we flood in this area and it kind of was going downhill. We brought in a lot of soil and we leveled it off and then we approached it in rooms. So if you see, each portion has been sectioned off. So today I thought I would just give you a tour of each section. Um, one video per section just so that it doesn't get too long. This is the cottage end. And um, so if you're looking to do a very small scale cottage garden, this, this really turned out beautiful. It's very effective. Um, it attracts pollinators and butterflies. And that's a butterfly bath that we put into the center of it. The flooring, we used a golden colored pea gravel from Home Depot. And we bought it by bags. We did not get it by the truck full because we have a lot of red stone also and we didn't want it intermixing in with our driveway type stone and the pea gravel. So we wanted to kind of keep it clean. It's very difficult to, even if you tarp it, it kind of falls off the tarp and then you gotta clean it all out, which isn't fun. So we decided not to do that. So let me talk about this particular end. This is the entrance way, and this is what we call the cottage garden. Uh, as you can see, there's a, our little frog up at the front that my husband got me for Mother's Day. He kind of guards over it, and he's just super sweet. I just love him to death. But the plants we chose, if you want to try to recreate this type of garden, these are blue star calamiris at the front, and I'll give you a close-up of them. They're absolutely gorgeous. They have a mounding habit and they just bloom all over them. They are getting ready for a little bit of a cutback and I'll cut them back about a third. This particular garden has only been in about three weeks and it is doing so well. As you'll see with the butterfly bath, everything has spread out and is pretty much going to fill that probably within another two weeks. There will be no empty space in there. We put down mulch so that we, when we get the hard storms, it doesn't blow out the soil and that has worked perfect. We've had no loss of soil. Okay, so behind the blue star, we have a Proven Winners Summerific Holy Grail Hibiscus. And this will get quite large, but it does bloom up and down its stalk, so therefore we can keep it trimmed up and still expect some blooms, which is really nice. We put one on either side. And then behind it, still around the butterfly bath, is Russian Sage and some Shasta daisies. They grow very tall, these two plants, so therefore they'll, they'll stick out. And behind those is going to be a hedge of burning bush, which will give us some separation between the neighbor's house and they get quite large. That's why their space so wide. I'm a patient gardener, so I don't mind waiting for them to fill in and giving them, them their space because believe it or not, as far as apart, I think we put them five feet apart, they will grow together. Um, our neighbor's also thinking about putting up a, a fence there, so that will also um, be a buffer between the two houses. This is not part of the cottage garden, but I, you, I probably should explain. Um, these are two oaks that we dug out of the regular landscaping. Um, they just kind of self-seed. And I'm gonna turn them into either bonsai or garden trees. We'll let them grow a bit in these smaller pots and they'll kind of tell me what they want to be. This one's pretty tall, so it might be a garden tree, more suited for that as it's, it's very tall, but sometimes they can sprout some branches. So we'll see, we're gonna give them time. You have to be very patient if you're gonna do bonsai or garden trees for them to grow. And obviously I have the rock on top to keep them settled because there's not much root there when we dug them up. They seem to be doing absolutely fine. I keep them very wet. Okay, so back to the cottage garden. 
here's the butterfly bath and in the butterfly bath we got we have scotch moss we have lemon coral sedum we have a red sedum here we have creeping speedwell here's another red sedum back here let me look at the tags i'm going to put up the tags for you so you can you can recreate this if you would like this is just um, the bottom of a pottery um, pot that we're using as the, the water source. We empty it out every day to make sure that we get no, and scrub it, no mosquitoes hatching in there. So that is cleaned out uh, every day, sometimes twice a day. We'll even blow it out with a hose to make sure we don't end up with any eggs. We have a lot of mosquitoes around here, so we don't want to um, breed anymore. All right, so this is this particular room in this garden. And the sound you're hearing is right next door, we have a fountain and that's our Zen garden. That's like, we, we name them. That's, that's our Zen garden, that's what I call it. It's got fern and the morning glories have just opened up. So that's pretty exciting. They are in pots so that they don't spread like mad everywhere. We are in a Northern climate, uh, zone 6B. Uh, there we go. We got a, a little bug visiting. Not sure what it is. I can't tell from this angle. And I will walk down the aisle and I'll show you it from the other direction. So this is what it looks like as you walk in towards the, towards it. So this is my little cottage garden and I thought I'd share it with you. It turned out so beautiful. We're so excited about it. And just in case you would like to create something like that, this is how we did it. I'm gonna put on the stone down here all the tags so that you can see everything we used. Give me one second and they'll be all I hope you can see all of them. All right, sorry about that. So I figure what you can do is just pause it and then you'll be able to read all of them if you're looking for what plants were used. I'll go a little closer over here. These are the bird bath. And then down here, not bird bath, I'm sorry, butterfly bath. And these are what's around it, except for the lemon coral. That's also in the butterfly bath. Okay, so thank you for visiting, and I hope you enjoyed our garden tour. Thank you.